If you've spent any time at all learning about color grading, you've probably heard enough about ACES to be curious. Maybe you've played around with it in Resolve, and maybe you've even gotten some interesting initial results. But if you're like I was, you're probably still a bit fuzzy on the fundamental questions. What is ACES? How does it work? And why should I use it? Over the course of the next few videos, we're gonna answer these questions in a practical and concise way and leave you with everything you need to start taking full advantage of ACEs in your grades. And today, we're gonna to begin this journey by looking at what ACEs is and what it has to offer. So, what is ACEs? ACEs, or the Academy Color Encoding System, is a color management framework for motion images. This simply means that it provides a standardized way of transforming what the camera saw into what our display can reproduce with an intermediate stage for color and VFX work. Now, to understand why this is important, we need to get straight on some basic image science. So I'm gonna give you the world's shortest course on human vision and image reproduction. Ready? Here we go. Let's start with the electromagnetic spectrum, which spans every form of radiation in the universe. X-rays, gamma rays, radio waves, ultraviolet light, any form of energy that travels in waves. There's a narrow band of this spectrum that our eyes are sensitive to and which we perceive as color, consisting of various amounts of red, green, and blue. Cameras and displays were built on a similar model expressing color as varying percentages of pure red, pure green, and pure blue. But how do we define pure red, green, or blue in this context? This is where color spaces come in. Scientists have precisely measured the full range of wavelengths which fall within the visible spectrum, and we can see them represented here in this graph. A color space is simply a triangle within this horseshoe which explicitly defines the purest red, green, and blue which a device is capable of capturing or reproducing. And just like points outside of our horseshoe aren't visible to the human eye, points outside of our triangle can't be captured or reproduced by a device which uses that color space. Now, here's the important part. When we know the color space of an image, we can transform it into any other color space simply by using the right math. Why might we wanna do this? Let's say we've captured something on camera A and we wanna view it on display X and each of these devices has its own color space. The best way to get an accurate reproduction is to mathematically transform the image from camera A's color space into display X's. We call this process color management and it's faster and more accurate than doing things by eye. And this is where ACES comes in. ACES provides a user-friendly system for making these transformations with support for a wide range of cameras and displays. Okay, now that we understand color spaces and color management, Let's take a look at how ACES applies these principles to take our image and move it from its acquisition state and into a graded display master. So let's get a look at the way these color space and color management principles play out practically inside Resolve and the ACES ecosystem. Now, before we begin, I wanna point out that in today's demo and for the rest of this series, I won't be setting up my ACES workflow here in the project settings, but here on the color page using Resolve's built-in OpenFX plugin for ACES transforms. The end results are gonna be identical, but doing things this way is gonna allow us to get a better, more explicit understanding of what's going on under the hood of an ACES color pipeline. So let's dive in. I'm gonna go over here to my open effects tab and I'm gonna spotlight for ACES to pull up my ACES transform. And I'm gonna drop this onto an empty node. And we're gonna begin by creating the simplest possible form of color management that we can in ACES or any other system. I'm gonna set my input transform dropdown menu here to match the color space of my source material, which in this case is Alexa. All of my material in this timeline is Alexa, with the exception of this one shot, shot number 13, which we're gonna discuss in a moment. 
So drop down menu for input transform is going to be set to Alexa. And under my output transform drop down, I need to match the color space of the display that I'm mastering on. Most of the time that's going to be Rec 709, and that's the case here. So I'm going to select Rec 709, and you can see when I go full screen here, this may not be all that I creatively want out of my image, but I've now got a normalized image. It looks much more correct for my display than it did a moment ago here in its camera log state. So this is the simplest possible form of color management that we can do in ACES or in any other color management workflow where we set up one transform from our camera color space into our display color space. And from here, we would simply do all of our grading off to the left of this transform and things would work the exact same way for every shot in this timeline. I would simply paste this same transform and do my grading off to the left. Now let's return to shot number 13, which I mentioned a moment ago. Shot number 13 is the one shot where this method won't work because the input color space is in fact not Alexa. If I turn this off for a moment, we can see that we already have a pretty normalized image, which tells me that this material is actually already Rec 709. So instead of Alexa for my input setting, I need to select Rec 709. And as long as I spot this and I alter my ACES transform accordingly, I should be good to go to do all my grading off to the left of whatever my final output transform may be. But this brings us to an interesting quandary for any timeline where we have more than one type of camera in play. And that's that when I go off to the left of this final output transform, my controls and my adjustments are going to be very different between a Rec. 709 shot like this compared to an Alexa shot like this. Because remember, if we think about what my effective sort of working color space is in these two examples, here it's Airy Log C because that is the color space of my original material and I'm doing my grading prior to making any transformation of it. Whereas here on shot number 13, my working space is actually Rec. 709 because once again, I'm doing my grading in the original color space of the image that was provided. So my response and the behavior of my controls and the way that things like LUTs and looks act on these different types of material is going to be quite distinct and it's gonna make more work for me when I go to try to match things up. And this is why the ACES pipeline provides for an intermediate color space which allows us to map everything into one common color space for grading prior to our final output to our display color space. So let's get a look at how that plays out. Let's go over to shot number 12 here, and I'm actually gonna grab a still of what we've already done using just this one transform. And I'm now gonna reset everything for the moment. And let's drop a new ACES transform onto node number one. I'm once again going to select Alexa for my input color space because that's still the original color space of this image. But instead of going to my display color space, my Rec. 709, I'm going to go to ACES CCT, which is one of the two intermediate or working color spaces that the ACES standard provides for doing color work. And we're going to talk more about the difference between those and when you might want to use which later on in this series. For now, we're going to go to ACES CCT and I now need to create a second transform because I've successfully mapped myself from camera color space to working color space, but I now need to map myself from working color space into display color space. So in this case, my input transform is going to be ACES CCT because that's what I transformed the image into here in node number one. And my output transform, you guessed it, is going to be Rec. 709. So I've now built this sort of color space transform sandwich here inside ACES, and all of my grading is going to happen here in the middle of these two color space transforms. Inside of ACES, we call this initial transform from our camera color space into our working color space, our IDT or our input device transform. And here on the other side, this transformation from our working color space to our display color space, we call our ODT or our output device transform. And if you notice, when I wipe to this still that I grabbed a moment ago when I only had the single transformation in place, my image is identical. So there's no visual difference between these two. It's simply allowing me to have an intermediate working space which can be consistent regardless of the original color space of my image. 
And now if we go back over here to our Rec. 709 shot and apply the same idea, except here on the input side, we set things to Rec. 709, I now can work in the same color space on this image that came to me in Rec. 709 as in this image, which came to me as Alexa. So it allows me to unify everything into one color space where my controls and my response are gonna be consistent, where I can set looks that I can paste across multiple shots regardless of their source format, and it generally helps streamline my process and make things a bit easier when I get into grading. So this is a really broad overview for you guys of the way these concepts of color space and color management play out inside of ACES. And we're gonna continue in our next video by going a little bit deeper into the way I would actually set this up for practical use and the way I would begin to grade within this pipeline. Okay, if you're still with me, you've already got a huge advantage over everyone who decided to skip the boring part and get to the hands-on stuff. Learning these fundamentals takes a bit of effort and a bit of patience, but without them, it's simply not possible to use ACEs effectively. In our next video, we're gonna build on this foundation and look at how we can set up our own ACEs pipeline from scratch. See you then.